Uh, what, 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 if you were Origin, would you make you choose red side? I'd probably use it as a counter pick. Oh! Someone that I like to counter pick for would be Nuke Duck. Well, that makes a lot of sense, given something strong against Pyrian in the mid lane. We are back on into picks and bans. SK on the blue have banned out Draven. Lucian, the second ban, a Callista to follow from SK. So lots of AD carries getting removed from the pool early on. And Callista has really started to crop up. It seems like everyone was watching the SK versus Griffin storyline. Maybe they've been scrimming it for a long time, but she is getting so much respect today. That's she is. And Patrick was the first player to bring it out in the LEC as well. So. Not really too surprised to see it come up against Origin. Lissandra taken away, Carthus taken away as well. And uh, means that we're looking at things, you know, Jace Jarvan's still available here. Yeah, and it's going to be one of those two. Now we've seen teams usually give away the Jarvan and then take the Sejuani so they can kind of match that scaling utility potential as well as early gank uh, access. Both these champions do similar things, but this time around, you know, the gauntlet is thrown down. Do you take the Jace? And if you leave Jace open, clearly Alfari has something to counter it. I mean, when we've seen Whirlip have strong performances as well, it's been on more tanky top laners, you know, the Scion, the Poppy, that's where he's getting his win. And this is playing chicken. This is saying, do you play the Jace? Because if you don't, you know that it can be flexed between multiple positions on the side of Origin. Well, Jace will be locked in for SK. So the gauntlet has been laid down. It's been picked up by SK. An immediate response is the LeBlanc for Nuke Duck in the mid lane. No counter picks here. Just going for that very strong, powerful assassin mid laner. Alongside it, the Rek for Cold. And because of the Lissandra ban, it uh, basically blows open the door for LeBlanc to just take over a game. She doesn't have a lot of champions that can uh, deal with her in the mid lane now. If Pyrian wants to be super safe, maybe he goes towards something like the Orianna and just yeah. tries to survive the lane. It's also been kind of his comfort pick that he's gone back to. A matchup I'm not uh, incredibly familiar with is the Corky matchup as well. Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker seems to be pretty strong, so we have seen Pyrian play Corky already once this split. One of the wins that SK got was on that Corky as well. And if he does want to pick it up, it'd have to be here, because you have to think, if if you're really concerned about Nuke Duck's matchup, you could ban it in second phase. So we'll see. Do we prioritize bot lane? Do we try to get Pyrian a matchup that he knows he's going into? Well, that is what is going through SK's mind at the moment. And they are going to go instead towards the Gragas. That's going to be jungle Gragas, you have to think. Maybe the Jace is even being taken in mid into this LeBlanc match. And it feels like with that type of setup, you're looking at a possible Yasuo pickup. Mm -hmm. So I would expect it to be banned in second rotation here from Origin. It works so well with the Gragas cask. It definitely does. And Yorick going to be locked in straight away for Origin. So that's the top side of the map secured for them. They're actually keeping that counter pick down towards the bottom side. It's still a counter pick, of course, but an AD carry counter, maybe Cassiopeia still on the cards here as well, if they want to take that. I'm actually just very surprised that they would wait this long to get firepower into the top side. It just, or excuse me, into the bot side. It tells me that Origin just feel confident enough playing their side lane pressure with uh, York and LeBlanc. They're just like, these are the champions that we want. This is the play style that we're doing today. We're not about playing reactive today. We're about, this is our set game. Plan, and we're going to make sure that we get the pieces to execute it. But with the Thresh ban, I think Origin probably uh, looking towards another mid lane ban. It is the Syndra coming out here. A, a good matchup into the Blomp, but Corky's still available for SK. Maybe Origin saying we don't think that Jace is going top. We think it's going mid instead. Uh, Pyrian's got a wealth of options that he can look towards. Um, Corky, Orianna, Yasuo if he really wants to. And we'll keep our eyes on that. SK going to get rid of another support in the form of Galio. If I'm Mithy here, I'm thinking, you know, Alistair's still pretty good. Tom Kench is okay as well. Uh, even the Morgana, if you want it into that Braum matchup, is a, a pretty strong pick. And it's all champions Mithy has been relatively comfortable on. I'd like something like a Morgana, I think. Yeah. Kind of really depends on what Patrick's pickup is going to be. It feels like they might not reveal it yet. Yeah, I think you want a counter pick, right? That, that is where I would go for the final pick. It is going to be the Tarm Kent, and Crownshot immediately hovers over the Ezreal. Do you think it's going to be something fun like the Nico? See, hmm. Now you put it in my mind, I can't think of anything else. I've got a one track mind, Frosk, and as soon as you say Nico, I say, ooh, Pop Blossom down towards that bottom lane. It's a possibility. I wonder how it would work uh, into something like the Ezreal. Ezreal seems a relatively safe AD carry in that matchup, and Nico very much about getting those three empowered auto attacks off so that you get the passive on your shape splitter, the extra little burst of magic damage. I mean, talking backstage with uh, Vedius, we've just been trying to theorycraft Nico, waiting for it to pop up. We've seen a couple of bands here and there, and um, he feels strongly that you could just blind pick the Nico. 
Okay. So you wouldn't necessarily have to wait until last pick to bring this one out. Well, if I'm looking at the rest of the picks for Patrick, he's, there's no Draven. Ezreal is taken away from him. No Callista, no Lucian. Civic, Hogmore, Tristana are the other three AD carries he's played this split. Uh, we are going to see World get a strong top lane in the form of the Renekton, which means that Jace has always been going towards the mid and will be matching up into the Loblonk. And I will admit, Civic would be a lot more disappointing than a Nico pick here, but Good scaling proponents on the side of Origin means that the Civi fits relatively nicely into their team composition. And it makes it really easy for uh, to buy time for Alfari to play a side lane when you have a champion like Sivir because you can just park her wherever you need that wave clear to be. More often than not, it is in the mid lane. And in tandem with Tom Kench, what, what are you supposed to do there? How do you ever engage on it? You're never going to be able to kill that lane. So what we think is Origin going to play up towards that top side through the Yorick split pushing through Nuke Duck on this LeBlanc as well. SK tried to get an answer with the Gragas and the Renekton. It gives him quite a lot of power up towards top. Don't really expect either of these teams to focus much of their early game down towards the bottom side. Yeah, so again, all eyes for me are always going to be on cold and self-made. Anytime SK and Origin clash here, these junglers are both high-impact players. Um, cold with Rek'Sai is fairly interesting because the last time he pulled out this champion, it was against Vitality, and all Cole did was he just kept the river warded. And he just said, you know, Vitality, they love to gank early. Uh, Mowgli's a very aggressive jungler. And all I need to do is track this guy. And my lanes are experienced enough that they'll walk away with the game. And I feel it's a very similar uh, pattern of play here. You know, Cole, he just needs to watch self-made. Doesn't need to interact with him. Just make sure that he doesn't get a chance to impact these lanes. And jumping into the third game of the day. It's a very vital one for both these teams. SK want to distinguish themselves from those teams sitting around the bottom of the playoff mark, sitting in that sixth spot. Origin, on the other hand, have been quietly rumbling, quietly working their way towards second place, and a win here would put them in very good stead, actually equalizing their wins with Vitality, with Splice, at that nine-win point. So, for both these teams, a vital matchup. The question is, who will come out as the victor? We jump onto the Summoner's Rift for the third game today in the LEC. Here we go. Crowd's live today. They're pretty hyped. I can't blame them. Like we, we are 18 games away from the end of the first ever LEC split. And still, still, we only have three teams locked in or out of playoffs. And one of the teams that does have a, a lead on kind of their playoff position is Origin. You know, when we're talking about the stakes for this game, it feels like it should mean a lot more for SK because their destiny really hasn't been decided or locked in stone. And it's kind of an interesting uh, cocktail that you have all of these things. You know, SK, legacy organization, very young, inexperienced roster with so much pressure behind them and probably one of the hardest games that they'll face. It's hard to compete with this hype. <laughs> They're pretty hype. Can't blame them. Origin fans coming out of the woodwork. Wonder where they were in the first few weeks when Origin went one and four. Suddenly, you guys were real quiet those first few weeks for Origin. Yeah, what happened? Oh, nothing? Probably the same place the Schalke fans have gone now. There we go. Let's go. So, let's talk about early jungle pathing. You said Selfmade and Cold are the ones to watch early on. Cold starting on the top side of the map, Selfmade starting down towards the bottom. And again, just the idea of Cold on a champion like Rek'Sai, uh, her ability to track and move through the jungle so quickly using the Tremor Sense, um, using her tunnels, is so good at making sure that enemy junglers can't do anything. Uh, and Selfmade being on a champion like Gragas. When you see this Gragas pick in very aggressive regions that shall go unnamed, it means level 2 ganks, level 3 ganks, level 4 ganks. And that's what I really expect from um, self-made when he has so much firepower in all of these lanes. That's a Renekton, that's a Jace, uh, anywhere on the map he wants to attack. Of course, LeBlanc quite hard to gank early on with that distortion, so you can just jump away, but when you use that aggressively, that's when the opportune moment comes to strike. Now, Krug stun by self-made down towards this bottom side. Looks like he's going to go for a normal first clear. Lots of wards already coming out from Origin in the river, as you see, just trying to track where self-made is. And in terms of like lane strength and lane power, I think the only really winning matchup I can see across the board is that top side. You know, Renekton should be able to pull out the Yorick early on, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think it's just your opinion. I'm going to say gonna back a, me up. See, a I soft said, yes. I said that, so if you said no, I'd be like, well, my opinion's obviously wrong then, but thank you for backing me up. No, us. it's okay. Um, Yorick, of course, still very dependent on more levels uh, to make sure that he can take over a side lane. We have always talked about 
And in fact, all day we've seen the Renekton picked into matches that should outscale him on a side lane, and that hasn't come true yet today. And we've also seen two massive upsets. So I'm not ready to just discount Warlib and SK here on this side lane Renekton. Right, especially since SK took down G2 last week as well. Like they're coming off a very, very high high against G2 and now looking to repeat that performance against some a team some people would say is the second best maybe the third best in the league on current performance i mean you talk to players and you talk to teams and the response is always origin are terrifying and the reality is is that you see two games of a team a week saturday or a friday and saturday and you have to think about all of those scrim blocks and all of the percentage of play that you don't see from a team you maybe see five percent of what a team's true capabilities are and yeah it needs to count on the stage you need to pick up those wins but i'm gonna go ahead with the teams here that are rumbling that origin are terrifying and if they move into a best of series they're gonna be that much scarier due to the experience and the versatility that this team has on seven and two in their last nine games as well so definitely on a run of form and a lot of that has come through the bottom lane you know patrick has had some very strong performances in the last few weeks cold i mean basically anyone on this team you could pick you pick them out and find two or three games where they really stepped up but sk last week against g2 had that stellar performance especially from crown shot on the jinx he really stepped up to the plate and was counted for his team after a lot of people had doubted him as, uh, as an AD carry in the league. You know, put him bottom five, maybe AD carries. And specifically on Ezreal. So it's nice to see that Crown Shot uh, kind of feels like he's found his confidence on the LEC stage going back to the Ezreal. Because you keep hearing things. I was talking to Broken Shard. And Broken Shard's like, ah, his Ezreal and Scrims is amazing. We just need to translate that onto the main stage. And, uh, you know, Jinx, Zaya, that's something that I trust Crown Shot on. His Ezreal, I'm starting to warm up to it a little bit. Not quite there yet, but I hear good things. We'll keep our eyes on him. Self-made with the first black has gone for the Predator Boots, as you would expect on the Gragas. Maybe looking for a gank down towards this bottom side. He's going to get his Krugs first. And then there is always that opportunity for a jungle matchup. So the uh, pathing from Self-made was actually red Krugs into like full clear for his jungle. He did take some time to sit in the side lane while Pyrian was pushed up. If you kind of rewind your map back to that pathing. And what it does is it resets Krug timer um, very quickly. And Krugs is like the number one experience camp for junglers. Typically when you have this type of pathing, it's like a rush level six type of pathing. Okay. I thought he might use it to uh, rush level three and then try for uh, like a cheesy gank, but just didn't have the opportunity in the lanes. So it's just kind of interesting from Self-made. We'll see what he does if he does reach level six in a pretty timely manner. First bit of action on the rift. I like that side. The fans go wild. Spirit <laughs> and you go trade with each other. Play by play, Cassie hits the oh, distortion. Look at that. He's hitting the minion with that cannon form. Oh, he jumps in. Oh, he jumps in though. Period ignited. Is it enough? No, oh. he is level six of the minion dying and just about survives. The crowd obviously prophetic in their cheers there, expecting something to happen. And now self going to come in and clear the wave out here, but Nukeduck with the first little foray in that middle lane. I think Nukeduck thought he had it, because yep. he's, he's sitting on Flash, so he can at least trade Flash for Flash. He's looking at basically one auto attack, and I think Nukeduck was like, eh, my Ignite, he's got this. But I believe, what, it was a, a minion that died? Minion died, level up on Superion as well, giving That's him rough. that little bit of extra health. Well, it happens, you've got to judge these things. He's a veteran mid laner. We talk about how strong he is week after week. We had, uh, amazing, extol his virtues, sing his praises. Those are the little things that count when you get down to the crunch in the LEC. But now you are playing in a lane where you don't have the Ignite, whereas Pyrian still has access to both his summoner spells, so retain that flash. Definitely did. Now, we, as we just scanned down towards this bottom lane, uh, something we haven't talked about a huge amount is the push potential coming out from a Sivir. With the Ricochet, you can just push these waves relatively uh. quickly, and you can already see the tower has taken a couple of plates worth of damage. Pyrian still has the flash here. Cold gonna flash in. The chase coming out. Pyrian with the knockback hasn't burned his sums. And with the hex drinker coming out, will be so safe underneath his tower. And once again, it's a summoner burnt for nothing from Pyrian. Yeah, and I do want to point out the uh, the build, the itemization. So we talked, you know, briefly about Corky when we did see the LeBlanc coming out. Um, Corky, one of the answers into LeBlanc, because he can defensively itemize into the hex drinker early on to uh, deny a lot of the kill pressure here. Same thing goes for Jace. So you can see Pyrian. Saved him right there. Self-made eyeing up this mid lane for a potential gank. It's going to walk straight across the ward, and Nukeduck still has a flash, so shouldn't really be able to do too much around that mid lane. Both junglers just uh, kind of facing off against each other. You know, you see Cold coming in for a gank, then you see Self-made try and find a, an avenue of an approach, but neither one really having the impact perhaps they would like in this early game just yet. Oh, hold on. He's waiting for him because he knows he's going he to distort to in. in here. He's trying to bait him for another distort. Pyrian going to stay around low. Hex Drinker 
Still no shield on that. That passive is down, but Nuke Duck is forced back by the wave and self made. Just letting his mid laner try and act as a bait. And Nuke Duck is not biting today. Yeah, just getting a better back. So um, I was trying to take stock of kind of who's won this early game and what's been pretty slow. I'll hold that thought though. You don't need to. He's okay. You can drop it again. And what I was going to say is that uh, the plate advantage seems to have gone in favor of Origin. You were talking about kind of the push priority that Patrick had on the Sivir. And I think he's got two plates. Let me check. Yeah, he's got two plates. As a note with the minimap, there's big three on the tower that you can always have a look at if you want to see as a spectator at home. See that so, blue tower on the side of SK only has a three on it, meaning two plates have gone down. Fun fact, Medic, I normally wear glasses. Yeah. You see glasses on my so face? So that's why I transitioned it from mocking you halfway through my point to ad advising our audience, because I remembered you usually wear glasses and didn't want to tease you for your short-sightedness. I can't see that number, Medic. Right, it says three, and that's because two plates have already gone down. Uh, Patrick just tanking up a missing shot here. Crown, uh, self made is around. Level 6 hit on Crown Shot. Dreams just hit the 6 himself as well. Pyrian coming down, trying to clear out some vision in this river. Maybe looking for a little bit of a four man dive down towards the bottom side, but not going to happen. Self made goes up again towards the river. All even nine minutes in. Not I too much to talk about. I think that a four man dive would be a bit overzealous from SK at this point, especially against Tom Kench and Sever. I think more importantly, they were trying to get control over the river. Um, I thought that they might transition that control into Cold's blue buff, which is actually up here. But because they don't know where Cold is, uh, it might just be an assumption. Another gank from Cold, and Pimian side sidesteps it once again. Nuketuck jumping forth and back. But just getting the chip damage down. Pyrian's done a very good job of absor absorbing pressure in the mid lane. And as much as you say a four-man dive would be over-eager, I'm a play-by-play, -play, okay? I like to talk about action. And so far, although this game has been very cerebral and has been very, you know, everyone is thinking a lot and thinking about exactly where they step and they're trying to read each other, which is great for someone who loves to analyze League of Legends, someone who likes talking about fights, it's not, not the best game so far for us. The big win is still, though, in the uh, the analytical side of this game, which is that Origin have managed to play around priority. Every time they have priority, every time they have the sured, controlled play, they act on it. So you can see Sivir and Tom Kench, they're rotating up. Meanwhile, Selfmade, he's trying to force something. He's getting desperate. He's fishing. He's looking for it. Afari pops the eulogy of the Isles. walking away from it. Well, he fished for it a little bit and then realized there's no, there's no lake or river up here, so there's no fish. And uh, Alfari, with a little bit of backup from the Maiden of the Mist, is just able to force him away. Yeah, exactly. He looked at Maiden, he's like, this isn't a 2v1, two, two this is a 2v2, yeah. I don't want it. <laughs> That's the major issue. Dragon goes down for Origin as well. 500 gold lead for them, Nuke Duck will be given that blue. Yeah, and that uh, gold lead is again in things like the tower plates and the CS discrepancy uh, for Nuke Duck. So while he didn't get the kill on Pyrian, um, he has made massive advantage that he's constantly forcing Pyrian back at uh, poor back timings. He's you know, eking the CS and this experience away from him and continuing to chunk him out. Keeps on just pushing that Jace back out of the lane. Mithy came up here to close some vision around the Rift Herald. Two plates going to, going to go down in the top lane as well for Alfari, and that is very good stuff for him. Very good news with a 10 CS lead on the Yorick. He is in a strong, strong spot. And Origin across the board, very happy with how this early game's gone. You know, you have about a 500 gold lead. You had the rift, uh, the dragon down towards the bottom side. Now you have control of the rift herald as well. So they are playing around where they want their strong side of the map to be and doing it perfectly. It's a uh, it's a paper cut play style. Origin are just slowly whittling away at SK, making these tiny little advantages on a composition um, that has a lot of scaling potential in the Sivir and the Yorick. They also have good mid game bridge points if they want to skirmish around something like a LeBlanc. So. Uh, as far as Origin's game plan is concerned, they're probably like, this is totally fine. Yeah, we didn't get the kill on Nuke Duck, but we are sitting very happy in everything that's happening in this game. Whereas, again, SK feel like they're getting a little bit desperate. You can see Selfmade is trying to attack the map, but he's just walking into vision every single time and not finding any sort of pressure on these uh, ganks. And this is how Origin have exemplified their playstyle recently. They are slow and steady. They've got the lowest combined kills a minute in their games. They have second lowest kills and deaths at the 15 minute oh, mark. Yeah, and their gold's even. Crown shot's fine. Crown shot's fine. You were excited there. I knew, I knew he was okay. True shot rush oh. comes out as well as Patrick forced away with the on the hunt. Here comes self made with the predator. Eaten up by Mithy. Mithy dodges away from the explosive cast. Still has the flash as well. Oh! The proc from the runic echoes gets the kill. That was a quick turnaround from the crowd. They're like, he's out. He's safe. Wasn't safe. <laughs>
I was I was so sure he was fine that I was talking about the graphic, never mind the fight. Origin actually going to play up towards that top side. They will look for the Rift Herald themselves. They're going to lose some plates in the bottom side, but they won't lose the tower too tanky at the moment for that. Cold claims the Rift Herald is a maiden here as well. Maybe even put the Rift Herald down. You've only got three plates left on that tower. You could just go for the first tower push. Oh, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Rift Herald is spawned. You're going to get massive uh, bang for your buck out of this push here, especially because it goes into Alfari's pocket. Oh, it's going to be a lot of gold going into Alfari's pocket. Look at his items. What are you supposed to do as Renekton <laughs> against that? I He's got love it. It's such a smart build path. It's such a smart pick into the Renekton as well. Tower goes down in the top side as the crowd goes mild. And uh, next up, Nukeduck looking for the play in the mid. Pyrian still has the flash. Nukeduck there. Flash away from Pyrian. Cold not able to get the knocker, but he's going to go in with the Boyd Rush. Rawr, indeed. As Cold will get the kill. Origin answer back to one of their own. And again, it felt like Origin were just sitting in their pocket. They're like, this is totally fine. We're, we're making these incremental gold leads across the map. And suddenly that they strike. They take the Rift Trail. They have no problem trading Mithy's life across the map for that. Excuse me, Patrick's life. Not going to blame the veteran member. Going to blame the, the newer kid. Oh, we could play Mithy anyway, if we really wanted to. Now, Tower's still alive down here towards the bottom side. Mithy pops the heal so we can switch over to the Flash with the unsealed spellbook. Not too surprising. And across the board, Origin still pretty happy with how this game's gone, but SK should be as well. You know, you've got OK scaling in the form of the Ezreal, the Jace. They will do a lot of damage and a lot of poke in the later portion of the game. And if you can avoid full-on teamfighting Origin, you actually got a very strong composition as the game does progress. And I want to quickly point at um, Origin's vision line here. Some of it has started to die out, but they did this against Vitality too. Normally you would expect uh, a team like Origin who seems to have like this, I'm going to say it, I hate this word, cerebral style of play, that they would force a lot of deep wards and mm -hmm. deep vision, but they actually don't. A lot of their vision just sits in the river, and I think it's almost like a combined element of just the experience that this roster has, that they don't need perfect information to... Uh, you know, maximize their, their play chances, that, you know, high reward, low risk play style that they like to go for. And I think it's almost only possible with a team like Origin, where the collective experience that you have for the roster is just crazy. Nukeduck dumps back here, cold there as well, but we've already got Sorcerer's Shoes and the Relic uh, Runic Echoes finished on towards the Gragas. Uh oh! Cold dodges away. Was it a dodge? It was a dodge, it was a dodge. I mean, it was missed as well, but I'm gonna... I always give the benefit of the doubt to the to the team that did a good thing. And that's what happened here. So I just get Tower in the bottom lane. 600 gold lead for them as well. Let's have a quick look across the items. Iceborn, Gauntlet, Mana Moon stacking up on Crown Shot. Still no first completed item on Patrick, but he will be going towards the Essence Reaver. This is my other thought with Origins, like, vision that stays pretty shallow. It's that Deficio walked backstage and he was like, stop feeding before yep. 15 minutes. No one walks into the jungle alone. I mean, that's what used to happen in the Origin games. They have been able to stop that for the moment. Dragon goes down, it's an Inferno, whirled with a flank, and it's going to be a 5v5. Pyrian on the wrong side of the map, though. And now Origin actually just want to back away. They're popping on the hunt. Trueshot Barrage comes out as well. You can see Whirlb's in the middle of that fight. He's doing a lot of damage, but SK just can't get the chase on. The Maiden is acting as a bouncer and stopping Origin in their tracks. And something that is pretty cool about Origin's composition when they do want to disengage like that is the... Oh! He's dead. Oh, he's done! Nuketuck goes in, gets out! That's another kill for Origin. Great stuff from them. They get the dragon second of the game and a thousand gold lead. And then you get cute little plays like that. But what I was saying is that between the Tom Kench and the Yorick, because um, we expect this composition to play in 4-1, but when they do play together around objectives like that, their zone control is crazy and their ability to disengage is pretty nuts. Because yeah. you can throw down the baby cage from Yorick, you have the giant maiden in front of you, and then you can just gobble someone up with Tom Kench. It's actually really hard to ever lock down Origin. They can very quickly run in, grab the objective that they want, grab the tower damage they want and then disappear into the night. Well, it came in with the teleport here as FK wanted to fight, but they just couldn't get onto the origin back line. I don't know how you actually crack yep. Origin here. You're dealing with a hyper uh, mobile LeBlanc. You've got the spell shield on Sivir. You have a Tom Kench and a York. How are you ever supposed to fight into that? Which means that Pyrian on this Jace needs to be ahead of the clock so he's hitting damage and more so needs to have that long range poke potential. And the fact that Jace received so much attention was put so far down, it is sitting on. I think a single completed item and a defensive item really hurts SK. I don't actually think he's completed his item. Oh no, he's gone for the Yumus. He has just finished that one up and has the Hex Drinker as well. But that fight, just not enough stuff from SK. And Origin now putting the pedal to the metal as they push down towards this mid lane tower. Already broken tier ones in the side lanes. Now they can just open up the map a little bit more. Feels like a 1-3-1 one, one has started to be enacted from Origin. I mean, let's be honest. Did Origin ever put the pedal to the metal? 
Okay, so they, they move the pedal like 2% closer to the metal. I mean, they are starting to speed up the tempo because yeah. they can, but it's like the difference between if G2 are, are a Ferrari, and when they step on the gas, you really feel it, Origin are like a Prius. <laughs> They're more economical, at least, with some of their plays. <laughs> They're Nick silent. You'd never hear them coming. Silent but deadly. That's the origin mantra across the course of the last few weeks. And they have moved that Yorick into a side lane with the Trinity Force. He's basically just impossible to deal with, even though Renekton, who is such a strong early game champion, can't really get to him with that Black Cleaver. And then, as well, the LeBlanc sitting an item ahead, sitting a kill ahead, is in just such a strong spot across the board. So it feels like so much pressure and eyes have to go to self-made. Um, with Jace and Renekton into these side lanes, there should never be an opportunity where they get to pick to kill someone. You know, it's going to be really hard for Renekton to force York to fight him. It's going to be really difficult for Pyrian to force Nuke Duck to fight him. And at this point, I don't think Pyrian wants that. So self -made needs to decide, how am I going to force either the side lane or the mid lane? Like, where am I going to use this Gragas cast to get something back for SK? Because Origin can just hold them at arm's length. Yep. Well, that's all they need to do as well. You've got a, a strong scaling Sivir who will be even stronger on a couple more items. You've got the LeBlanc, who's incredibly powerful when she gets to that 2-3 item. Spike can just burst people down. But SK forcing around mid, bringing everyone here, saying, we want to get this tower. We need a little bit of gold in our back pockets, and they should get it pretty easily. Self-made was around the corner as well. That's the tower down. Good stuff from SK as they strike back towards Origin. And also great positioning. Self-made uh, cheating off to the side on top of the vision, looking for someone to disrespect to step forward and to sweep them off of that tower. So excellent read from Origin to also say, you know, we just need to give this one up. Yep. We're not going to open ourselves up for any sort of counterplay. And then in the end, they do trade back up. Way. And that's the thing. You look at that, you're like, ah, oh, yes, SK, great job. They got the mid tower. And it is true, it's good. But ultimately, Origin were just looking, you know, 10 seconds later. We're fine Ooh. trading that mid tower for interior top. Now, Fire Pops the old hit, Trisha Brush, not quite enough to take him down. As you say, Origin playing the map just as much as SK were playing the map, equal, equalizing that sort of trade in the side lane. And as we come to the 20 minute mark, we do just need to. Think about exactly how these teams want to play out the rest of the game. So Origin seem to be happy with a 1-3-1, one, one, happy taking it a bit slower, rotate our fire when you need, but at some point, SK will need to pull the trigger. At some point, SK will have to force, and the question is, where do they force? What do they force around? Well, uh, mm -hmm. hold on. I think we're okay. I'm I really scared for them. Who are you scared for? I'm scared for SK. Why, do you think New Duck can just take them out? Yes, look at uh, Pyrian's items. Yeah, that guy's not a champion right now. You're right, you're right. He's, he's quite far behind. And that's what's scary for uh, SK in general is that their composition wants to drive tempo and they want it to be in the driver's seat at this point in the game. And because they're not, uh, you're looking for SK to prioritize defensively sweeping out their jungle and then trying to create numbers disadvantages or make big picks and trying to find their foot back into this game. But they have to be so careful. Oh, crown shot. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. That's what Nuketuck can do to a man if he oversteps. He gets him out. There's the kill. Now they'll go down towards the Cloud Dragon. You asked me who I was afraid for. That's exactly what I was afraid of. But that wasn't that wasn't Pyrian. That was Crown Shot. He could have done that to Pyrian. Okay. Well, he, he did it to Crown Shot in at the moment. And Origin will use that advantage to come down towards this bottom side. You can see four members near the red buff of SK. They continue to push in the side lanes. Yes. Uh, SK are answering, but every time Origin find a pick, every time they find a little bit of damage, they just continue to starve the life out of SK. And again, it's those those paper cuts, but they paper cut you in the same position. I don't know if you've ever got a paper cut underneath your nail, but it hurts. Ooh. And that's what Origin are right now. But eventually, they're just gonna rip the nail off. As a medical professional, it's one of the one of the most painful feelings I've ever I've ever heard of. I'll admit, paper cut under the nail. It's like nah, incurable. I'm sorry. Make your peace. <laughs> I do want to. I, I want to bring a, a little bit of seriousness to SK's plight in this game as well, because when we look at their playoff run, when we look at them at seven and seven at the moment, you they're trying to fight to get towards you know those nine wins, which is historically the best point to get into playoffs. But they've still got splice, they've still got uh, rogue, they've still got vitality left to play. I and mean, uh, the thing was is that you would expect that this game would be hard, possibly the hardest, depending on you know who vitality are, are starting. I'm going to hold the point. Two today as well. They're, they're not the easy opponent they seem like at the start of the week. And that's what I was going to bring up. It's the fact that everyone is stepping up. You know, this is a ridiculous strength of schedule for SK. It really is. Nuke Duck continuing just to poke and prod around the side of this fight. Alfari pushing into the tower here as well. The Demolish Pot comes out. That's another tower across the OG. 3,000 gold ahead now. They can just get this vision in once again. Look towards the Baron. OG 
in a very, very powerful position, and SK found wanting of answers. This has just got to be so frustrating to play out if you're SK. Well, I mean, Mithy's caught him out a little bit here. He's going to flash across, trying to catch out Patrick. Patrick pops the spell shield, and Wellup can't get close enough. Put into the cage. He jumps back onto the back line with the slice and dice, but Mithy eats him up. That's one down, and now SK taking the fight. Cold going to jump across the wall. It's actually Alfabi who wants the ball, and Nuka jumping in. Self make goals golden. It's up to Crown Shot. He's opening it up. Cold jumps onto the back line. He gets Crown Shot. Mithy's still alive. Patrick's still alive. OG somehow still alive as Nuka jumps forwards once again. Empyrean has nowhere to go. Can't get away from Cold. And the dunk crew. It's a triple kill for the man in the jungle. And for a split second, it actually looked good for SK right there. That was kind of the one area on the map that they wanted to team fight in, which are those close, tight knit corridors. You have so much line damage with Ezreal and Jace that if you can get Origin in a choke point, you can start picking them off, but the same thing can be said for Sivir, and ultimately the gold lead spoke for itself. You can see here, Werleb realizes he's out of position. The chase comes out from Origin. Werleb's like, oh, can I get someone? Can I catch someone out? He jumps onto Patrick, but just doesn't have the damage to take down Sivir quickly enough. The one thing, though, is that I believe the shutdown bonus goes to Pyrian, and that may actually help this Jace get a foot back into this game. So he's on clock, and he's actually doing the damage that he needs to be doing at this point in the game. And it's right here. We're like, ah, maybe SK have actually got this. But the flash forward from Cold to separate the team fight and the nuked quickly gets around the corner. You have to, like, self-made was probably 50 extra damage away from killing both Mithy and Patrick in that fight. He could have been the man that his team needed in the moment. You can see Andre there giving a little fist bump across <laughs> towards... He's, like, not even close. Oh, easy, easy clap for Origin so far. 5,000 gold ahead now, 25 minutes or 24 minutes in. They've got this Yorick down towards the bottom side. Baron is available for them if they want it, but they don't really need it so far this game. Well, knowing Origin, they're not going to take it unless it's like 100% yeah. guaranteed because that's the only way SK get back into this game. And with their uh, comp of Jace and Ezreal, it's actually quite easy to fight around the Baron as long as they have, you know, the vision to step up to it. So Nuke Duck is on a ward here. Selfmade coming in, trying to bait just a little bit. Crown Shot on his way down as well, but they're not going to do too much as Nuke Duck just jumps away with a distortion. Cold is the one split pushing in the side lane as he has easy access to Burrows and can just get himself back towards the team. And I, I like... Origin will happily do this for the moment, you know, this 1-3-1 one, one, or 1-2-1, one, one, technically with Nuke Duck just trying to poke and prod down towards the bottom side, but if SK hard engage, hard force onto maybe the Sivir Tom Kench, hard force onto Cold, they do have an opportunity to strike. Yeah, but just say what you said, hard force onto Sivir and Tom Kench with what engage? It's a Gragas. It's a very quick Gragas though with the Predator Boots. He's he a has. fast Gragas. Speedy boy as he tries to get into the fight. And don't get me wrong, the possibility's there for the outplay. It's just, again, I said it, and I'll say it again, this is so frustrating for SK to play against because you're trying to, like, Rubik's Cube this game, problem solve, figure it out. How do we actually crack them? And what is what would be your solution, Fosk? If you were in SK's mind right now, if you could be a coach for a second and speak into their ear, what would you tell them to do? Uh, go back to basics. So the first thing that you want to play around is your vision. Uh, you want to make sure that you defensively clear out your jungle so you can actually walk in between your lanes and your own map to pick up farm safely, which is what they're doing now as well as prioritizing the Baron. And then you're just going to trade farm back and forth and try to make uh, high reward, low risk plays. You don't want to over engage into a long team fight right now. You just don't have the, the items or the stats to back it up. You're looking for picks. Quick hit and run. Cold has uh, got a litany of burrows around here. Almost looks like an episode of Stranger Things. Like in the second series where he puts all the burrows around. I've been watching that recently, which is why it came to mind, I'll be honest. It's good. Yeah. Kind of weird, but I'll I mean, work that's, with you. That's kind of my, uh, just my way of working generally, anyway. So, SK, vision control, go back to basics. That's what they're doing up towards this top side, but Origin, do you just have the advantage if they push in as a four-man? You can see Nuke Duck is waiting here to see if Selfmade steps out of position. Pyrian coming around the backside of the fight, though. Maybe SK can find a pick. Maybe they can find someone out of position here from Origin as they step forward towards the Baron. But Nuke Duck does still have that flanking position. Maybe Origin will pull the trigger. Yeah, and now that they have kind of their triangle vision set up in this area, and because... Um your three items are almost complete for Ezreal. SK probably feeling a little bit safer because they can kind of kite out of situation safely. But again, it's moving over into areas first around monster objectives, making sure that they have the vision there so they can at least approach and start using some of their poke tools. Patrick has teleport here. He was waiting between the inhibitor tower and the first tower, actually. Nuke Duck may be caught out because that's a speedy Gragas coming on his, on his way. The double distortion used. Nuke Duck will jump back. And now Origin 
as a three-man unit will push in, try and get some of this vision cleared out. They don't have any Oracle's lenses up at the moment, but some control wards in their back pockets. I thought it was very cute that Origin were setting up for the Abyssal Voyage. They basically looked to Nuke Deck and said, hey, go look delicious over there. We'll see who we catch coming for the play. Um, SK smartly sent majority of their team in. Or you were just like, eh, it's not worth it. Not in front of Baron. If we ever misplay that, that's exactly how SK walk back into this game. And I think that's the only criticism I've had of Origin on their meteoric rise, the last nine games going 7-2, is that sometimes at this point in the game, they're a little bit too safe. Like, the, the, the best teams we've seen in each region tend to be a little bit more willing to take a skirmish, tend to be a little bit more willing to, to make that big step up play. And Origin, although they play safely, against a team that would take a 50-50, might sometimes lose out. And there is a conversation that's kind of happening in the wider community. I think Papa Smithy really started it about, uh, you know, what is the optimal way to play League of Legends right now? And it feels like so many teams are going towards that skirmish risky style, but I'll hold the thought because maybe Ooh. the trap has been sprung. Yeah, I mean, Mithy's jumped on here by Pyrian. Self-made there as well as Cold comes in from the side. Patrick there with you on the hunt. Cold force back, but gets a lot of damage down as self-made and gets the boy to sold off. It's a one-for-one -one trade as Yorick and Nuke Duck push down towards the bottom lane, though they're going to lose an inhibitor. Maybe even the base. It, in time, Whirlip came back to respond, but Arjun get everything they wanted out of that fight. Yeah, and that's the 40 chess. It's the fact that you trade jungle for jungle, but as long as you also have the pressure point bottom, uh, Origin now secured their opportunity to step up to the Baron next time. It's going to be pretty difficult to always have a member down there to time with the super wave, and this should be a very stock standard. Okay, we wait until the super wave pushes in bottom, and then we're going to dance with them around Baron. Seems to be pretty easy stuff for Origin now. As you say, the Supers pushing in that bot wave just make it so much easier. A uh, quick look across these gold differentials. Uh, big lead in the top lane for Alfari, about 2,000 gold there. I mean, it's about 6,000 gold across the board for Origin. It's just little bits here and there. 2,000 in the jungle as well, actually. Cold having a very strong performance on the Rek'Sai once again. Said it. I think Cold's Rek'Sai, pretty great. Allows yeah. him to track. It it's does, more actually. Of a, um, what do we call them? Carnivores and herbivores? Yeah. He's like a, an herbivore jungle. Uh, but he's got five kills, though. Well, yeah, but... It seems pretty carnivorous to me. He's kind of like picking those up in team fights. It's like the, oh, okay. uh, the I assassination I often, potential. Yeah, I often find herbivores are just like, oh, yes, I love vegetables, but now it's there's something low near me. a good clarification. I mean yeah. his early pathing. Okay, I agree, I agree with you there, Foss. It feels like <laughs> this game was quite quiet for a long time, and then as soon as the map opened up, Origin just used their big brains to outmaneuver SK. 200 IQ players across the border are setting up four items on the Patrick on the Patrick on the Sipper now Infinity Edge Essence Reaper complete on him. Uh, Cold has a few items under his belt as well. I think he's got the GA on that Rek'Sai and maybe Origin actually just starting up the Baron. You can three-man it here. That Yorick pushing down towards the bottom side has the teleport but the easy Baron take you have to think for Origin with a Infernal and Mountain backing up their damage. Now TP comes out away from the fight. Whirlib's low but Yorick's just going to push the bait. Newtak's there as well. I mean, Arjun run away, but Arjun just taking the base at the same time. Alfari and New Tucker in here. SK ran away from their own base and maybe sacrificed the game. Origin continue their climb at the NEC table with a dominant win over SK. He said they have big brains, Frosk. It's not flashy, but it puts wins on the board. You can see it, you know, Origin were playing with their food. They were pulling SK around the map. They were trying to, to bait them into opportunities that they wanted to create. And SK, they just got frustrated. Yeah. Whirlip, you know, teleports. He's like, let's just start a fight. Let's go for it. I, he's out of position. You understand it, but there is a, there's a moment where you're like, well, they did this to us last time when we tried to make a fight and we lost our in here. And then you make basically the same call again and you lose your base. Like, obviously, credit to Origin. They starved the game away from SK. They continue to play this methodical style of League of Legends that just seems to be their best way of winning at the moment. Seems to be working incredibly well for them. And they continue their climb up the LEC table. You know, they've, they've got a couple of tough matches left. Uh, Rogue tomorrow, Schalke next week, XL next week. Actually, the, the one I would have said is tough is Schalke. And they're not looking that good at all at the moment. So. Origin, if they don't take three wins from three, probably be kicking themselves. And it's the possibility that Origin could finish with a 4-0 and not just, you know, with G2 continuing to kind of fumble and drop these games, there's a very real opportunity where Origin start to rocket up the standings and show that they are truly the best team in the LEC before playoffs even begins. Yeah, it definitely could. And I, I think Origin right now should be looking at second place and they should be eyeing it hungrily because although Vitality have 
an extra win over them, although Splice have an extra win over... Oh, no, actually, they tie up with Splice with this win, actually, don't they? Yes. Although Vitality have one extra game over them. It's Vitality and G2 yes. that are still sitting ahead of them. But uh, if Vitality, if they lose later on today, when they play up against Rogue, that will even out that second place spot. And Origin continue to be the team that, to me, looks the strongest of the chasing pack. But it's uh, it's kind of back to that conversation that we were talking about. You know, what is the, the defining style, the superior optimal way to play the game? Origin, when I look at them, they almost look like a, a miniature LCK team. You know, yep. this is the, the style of League of Legends that everyone prays for so long, whereas G2 seemed to be that, you know, rise LPL. of LPL, yeah. rise of Invictus Gaming, like scrappy skirmish style. So from a holistic level, super exciting to see the LEC with kind of like so many different styles rise to the top. But now I'm curious, you know, who is going to be able to play both that define themselves as the true champion of the league? Or if one style just comes out on on top in terms of the, the 1v1 battle, you know, maybe we see a 5v5 between Origin and, and uh, G2 and we see which style is just superior because if Cold Tracks uh, Jankos, as well as he tracks self-made this game, can Jankos actually make a play? Can Jankos do anything in the early game to really set them up for success? There are so <laughs> many good signs in the crowd today. I just don't understand why Andre needed to put people on Cristiano Ronaldo's body. It's the fair. guy, the guy's a beast anyway. What I was gonna say though is we were like, you know, Origin this, G2 that, Splice just had a massive upset, and Vitality have been sitting consistently back here like, guys, what about us? Yep. And Again, it sounds like such a cop-out, but it feels so good to look at the LEC and you have so many strong teams with very defined styles this late in the season. Yeah, and you still have these teams fighting at the bottom of playoffs as well. I think SK is the best example I'm of that. I'm looking year. at the top, you're like, but yeah, what about yeah, the but bottom? That's, uh, every game matters so much. You have to look at both ends. SK, you know, now sitting at seven and eight. Who are they fighting up against? Who's next? Schalke's still at seven and eight. You've got these teams down towards that bottom side really fighting for that fifth, sixth spot. As much as the second spot is important, who gets in is really important. The answer well. is for Fnatic fans, and that's all majority of the audience cares about. They're like, okay, SK lost a game again. Yeah. Fnatic just need to keep winning. Hopefully, we can slip past them in the standings. That's definitely true. Your options for Kia player of the game are Nuke Duck, Cold, and Mythy. Go to Outlaw Lee Sports on Twitter and vote. You know who's not in that list? Alfari. Alfari. Hmm, various. Hmm, mm. interesting. Hmm. If only I had a detective to tell me why. Oh, that's an entirely different person. I've Sorry. actually never met Detective the Vedius or uh, Dr. Medius. They are I, totally different people. Don't know if they're like twin brother or anything. For more on Origins win, let's check in with Frankie and their jungler. I'm here with Cold, and I'm interested in what you thought of SK's draw, because they were focused in that bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they put a lot of bands towards uh, Patrick, but I, f I think that's just a strategy that doesn't really work. He he plays pretty much every champion in the game, so I, I don't think any of us were worried about it. It was just kind of wasted, in my opinion. But I think he's played something like 13 different champions across this split, actually, so he's not someone you can really test in that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's so young and talented and he plays the game all the time, so of course he's going to have a big champion pool. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I was a little bit surprised, but I think uh, teams are just trying to look at different ways to target us and see if we are prepared for it. Uh, so, I think it was, it was all right to try it, but it just doesn't work. Do you feel like SK targeted you differently to the last time you met them? Because it looked really like history repeating itself. Uh, I actually think last time we played them, they should have won. They had a big lead on us in the early game, and they just kind of threw the game. Uh, I think this, this time around, we had a better plan, and we knew how to execute the game. So the game was pretty simple. Uh, I didn't really feel like they pressured us that much. Uh, they were just kind of giving us what we wanted. So. And we definitely learned that you never try and take a team fight with Origin. Every time they came at you when you were tackling that dragon, it all ended in disaster for SK. I actually, I actually think they should be winning some of the team fights with their comp, but maybe we just outplayed them. I'll have to rewatch it. But uh, usually we had the control and we had the tempo, so we had the setups on the on the drakes, and that kind of gave us gave us an advantage in the in the fights. I think. Maybe I sense a little bit of flaming here now, Cold. I do actually need to ask you a question though, because yeah. the thing is about Origin, you're very reliable, you play super safe, and you often win. You've won eight out of your last 10 games here at the LEC. Mm -hmm. But can you actually win playoffs without taking any risks? If we can win playoffs, I mean, we will see. Uh, we take one game at a time and we play our style. And I think no other team in, in the league plays the way we do. Uh, you say super safe. I think we just, we are more calculated and we like to play smart. Some of the other teams doesn't like to play that smart. Hint at a certain top team. Uh, 
but that is what it is. Uh, so this is just the way we play, and I think it works for us. Well, I love a gang of geeks, and I think Origin just might fit the bill. But let's head back to Alex and the Alice, because I know they're gagging to break that one down. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Frankie, there with Cold. So, gentlemen, we've got so much to cover. Yep. Uh, what a game, what a result. And I think uh, I really like that Cold corrected it. It's like, I, I don't consider it safe, I consider it restrained. I consider it calculated, I think was the word he used. Does that sound about right? Does that Clinical. resonate with you? Clinical. Clinical. Some would say. Some would say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that this was typical origin, what we saw. Um, they, they are a team, we talked about it at the very beginning of the day, where when they make plays, they're kind of looking for those plays that have a 70, 80% chance yeah. of success. If it's 50-50, they don't feel the need to take the risk, which is why the games seem a little bit slower. Um, but they did some really cool stuff this game, which we're going to talk a little bit later on about. Absolutely. I want to start at the very beginning. Um, is that sound of music? I think it is. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's look at those picks and bands, amazing, because yeah. you your eyebrows were raised before a single second of gameplay happened. So I actually thought that SK targeted... Um, uh, origin in the right manner. I yeah. would have picked a strong 4 1 2 as they did. Basically, as for Jays, Graga, Spraum, you have a lot of contests, you have a lot of ability to basically like, create space for you and your team. And Origin so far has shown like almost um, like inability to play the 1 through 1 properly, uh, which we're going to come back to later. Uh, so it's actually the right way to attack them, but it was the wrong execution uh, right. given the comp. So for me in this draft, uh, I actually like the fact that I feel SK had a lot of early game options so they could leverage, and I think that's the best way to attack Origin yep. because when they make these random mistakes in the early game where they just die and they fall behind, as we talked about earlier, they're not the team that will make those gambles. So if you can get a strong arm on the game very early, then it becomes difficult for Origin to find ways back in. And I felt like when you draft things like a Renekton and you have a Jace, you actually have a couple of side lanes that you can play around. Um, but as Cold said in the interview, we didn't really see much pressure pressure coming out from SK in the other game. Right idea, wrong execution. That's the summary of the yeah. draft? Love it. I would okay. say so. And uh, actually, I was, I was learning an awful lot. I just sat here with Vedius and Amazing, and I watched Amazing teach Vedius about League. It, I, I, of course, I'm included in that list, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sitting there like, oh, you didn't know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> remind me of your prediction this game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm 0-3 today. I'm 0-3. No, no, but all, all seriousness, it was specific to jungling, which I'm not going to fault you for not yeah. having your head around. But you were, you were praising the root that Cold was taking, I mean, and I'd love you to explain it. For so the basically, the route that Cold was taking was basically a controlled route where um, you're greeting on one side, you're basically taking as many camps as possible, so then you can spend longer time on the opposite side because you don't have to return to the same side as fast again because the camps are not respawning yet. Sure. So basically, you don't have any camps to take, on, the, on that side, you can spend more time on the other side and basically slow down the game and allow your bot lane especially to just control the pace of the game too because you're going to sit around them for longer. Right. And I think that helps Origin in general because you want to open up Mithy, you want to allow him to basically just play the game controlled and allow him to roam and open up space later on in the game. That's something they did where they went to went for craps, especially on level 6, level 7, when Mithy was actually comfortable getting out of lane phase. Right. And I... This gives me a perfect opportunity to talk a little bit jump, about Alfari okay. here. Oh. Because <laughs> hey, now. what you talked about is that the jungler pretty much didn't spend any time around the top side of the map. He yeah. did a very greedy kit and allowed him to invest a lot more towards the bot side. And the Renekton into the uh, Yorick matchup is heavily favored for the uh, Renekton early on. Yeah. So Alfari, in a matchup where he had no support, in a matchup that he's losing, actually ended up coming out ahead in that one versus one. Okay. And actually did very well for himself. He certainly did. And he was a big part of how that game ended. And of course, We'll but touch on that. But that was is one of the three OP players. I don't remember <laughs> that, that, that being a thing. No, but obviously, this team fight is going like this. This is basically a compilation of Nuketech's kind of solo kits where he looks for the opportunities as LeBron as he's supposed to, and he basically showcases what the champion can actually do. Every time he sits in a bush, he has a ping board behind him, basically allowing himself to be in a secret spot where none of the enemy players can predict where he is, and then he goes for the for the assassination. And it's almost like Nuke Duck heard me say that he doesn't make plays or take gambles, yeah. and then he locks in LeBlanc, and then he has a fantastic game overall. Uh, you got to give credit to the man. He helped build a lot of the early game leads for Origin uh, at the first part of the map, and I think that he definitely had a great game overall. Yeah, and we do actually have that awesome team fight that really did seal the deal. It was the win for Origin around that Mountain Drake, and we can watch that one more time. Can you just walk me through how this, because it looked so good for SK. So the thing, the main issue I have with this fight is it's like SK is trying to force something with no real objective to play around it. Origin are kind of in a better position to react to it. Alfari is slightly out of position coming off the flank, but the key thing to note here is we wanted to highlight how good SK is on a mechanical individual level. And keep your eyes on Gragas, keep your eyes on the self-made. He almost wins this fight 
single-handedly. And if he just had a little bit more damage, if those health bars had been a little bit lower, yeah. this could have swung the entire game in favor of SK. And just due to some very good play from the side of Origin and just having that slight mechanical advantage over their opposition allows them to come out on top. But this is the thing about SK that you can never really yeah. predict or, or control. Just look at that picture, though. Now that I'm seeing it in the back, that's actually intense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a whole lot of love. And indeed, you know, the, the, the topic of the pre-match was Alfari and Nuke Duck. And actually, that's where this conversation is going to be coming to a conclusion. Because y you threw a word out that neither of us were familiar with. Yeah. Overloading. Can you give us all a it's, tutorial? Yeah, it, it is a concept where basically you have two sideliners join on one side and basically then try to kill the enemy sideliner or basically try to take the turret. What that does is basically evades team fights you don't yeah. want to take and you basically make the game more individualistic where you have the 1v1 matchups, you have the 2v2 matchups, and then you're basically playing a really, really small map instead of big map where basically enemy can contest your round objectives that you're not ready to take yet. So we see this multiple times. We see Origin. Cold, Mithy, Patrick taking vision out of the Nasher. Meanwhile, the duo of Yorick and LeBlanc are pressuring on the bot side of the map. And that means that any time they basically get to hit turrets, they will take it instantly. And that's how we, they also ended the game in the end, where right. uh, Nukeduck and Afari basically together looked for the play, and we see it now. Exactly, Maurice. And I love the fact that the moment SK tried to force something, OG immediately punished on the other side. And I think what's really cool uh, for fans, especially at home, is people are so used to like 1-4, one, 1-3-1. One, one. This is effectively a 2-3 two, two, three. Three strategy, yeah, right? Two, three. And it's something that's not commonly seen um, because the risks you run is you are leaving, potentially, yeah. your three-man against the four-man. And if they win that fight, maybe they convert it into a Baron. Maybe they convert it into something big. It has to be quick, amazing. Yeah, it has to be really quick because otherwise you, it happens what, what uh, Vidi you just said where they can just force the Nash and if they force the Nash you're stuck in a position where you have to utilize your TPs or you have to utilize basically your tempo completely to get back to the Nasher and that can backfire in a lot of cases but in this case it obviously worked out pretty well. And the, the execution was just perfect yeah. as well because you look at the vision, you look at how they set everything up, everything was done perfectly for Origin and for anyone wanting to learn more, I would highly recommend you watch this game again. No, absolutely, yeah. Go ahead, rewind it, watch it because your Kia player of the game was Nuke Duck. 55% of the votes though, <laughs> it was a toss up, but Nuke Duck does take it with some sexy LeBlanc play and a big win for Origin. That is it for us now. We're gonna be going ahead and taking a break because coming up next, Vitality look to get one step closer to second place as they face off against Rogue, don't you go anywhere.